Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon, I'm going to be talking to a very special guest called Steve Newton. Now, Steve and I were meant to meet a couple of years ago when I was on a radio show in my local town, but it didn't happen. And we often wonder sometimes, why don't these things happen? Or we can sit and dwell on these things of, why didn't that happen? Or why didn't I do this? Or I could have done this better. Or I could have done it differently. But I always say, things happen when they're meant to happen at the perfect time. So in your life right now, if you think about something that you wish you could have done differently, or you know, maybe it didn't go to the plan that you wished, and you think, oh, lots and lots of thoughts going to be ahead, lots of regrets maybe, lots of I wish I did, or I wish I hadn't done this, or if only. Stop it for a moment. And in this episode of Breaking Patterns, we're first of all going to listen to a little bit of music by Denise Wise, because that's the theme of our show, to break those patterns from the past that have been holding you back. And within this moment with Denise, think about something in your life that maybe you're holding on to in your thoughts, and it keeps going over and over and thinking, if only I'd done this differently, or if this, or if that, or could I have done that? Just bring something to mind. If you've got a paper and pen handy, you could even write it down. But think about something in your mind that you keep dwelling on. Because if you keep holding your mind in that mindset, it can't get beyond that. It experiences all the emotions that you went through when you're in that stuff back there. And that's not helpful to this moment. So I'm going to put this beautiful bit of music on by Denise and have a think about what pattern do I need to let go of? What do I need to let go of from my past that I as think is holding me back? Okay, so just closing your eyes for a moment and going into that quiet space in your mind, just gently breathing. And think about what do I need to let go of? Today. 
I can do this. I can turn this around now. I can do this. I will do this. I am ready to change that pattern now. And things are falling gently into place. Thank you, Denise. And that's the theme behind our series, to invite in guests who have maybe been through something in their lives and understand what it feels like to be stuck in those patterns and now are turning it around with whatever they feel is their right message. So it's turning their mess into a message. Your mess isn't there for a reason. The place that you feel stuck isn't there for a reason. It's a big lesson in your life that you need if you've come to your surface and it's causing you disharmony, this is your time to turn it around. This isn't the time to say, let it go with no reason. Let it go with the intention that you understand it, the blessings within it, and now you're ready to step up and you are ready to take control of your life. My guests will be joining me very, very shortly and I'd just like to say, you know, just sit back and listen to his story because he's actually chosen to step in and do something about the way he was feeling, the way life had been going for him. And he's turned what he went through into his message in a very, very special way. Be back with you in a moment. So good afternoon again, everybody. And I've got my special guest to join me this afternoon and a very warm welcome to you, Steve. How are you today? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. It's very kind of you. Thank you. No, I'm so grateful that you're here because we were meant to meet a couple of years ago, weren't we? Yes, that's right. And, uh, and then all this pandemic thing started, didn't it? Yeah. And it, we just didn't get the chance. So I know. But don't you think, Steve, though, that sometimes when things don't happen, they always happen at the perfect time? Yes, I do. I think uh, I think there's a lot about synchronicity, isn't there? And there's a lot about yeah. things happen at the time that they're meant to happen. Simply yeah. that. So. Absolutely. And often plan B turns out to be a better plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The benefit of experience and hindsight. I think that's that's yeah. what that's called. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got the wisdom that, you know, maybe we didn't have back there a couple of years ago. And now we're in a better place so we can go, right, let's bring that in. And I would say to anybody, if you have actually got regrets about something that didn't happen in the past, and I just did a little mini meditation before we come in, as remember, keep recognizing when those patterns from your past are holding on to you, or when you're holding on to something from the past and it's holding you back. Because if it didn't happen back then, it's because it wasn't meant to. That's right. And we're all, we're always forever changing anyway, and we yeah. change on our experiences. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm so grateful that you've come back into my life at this moment in time, because this is a divine time for us. Because <laughs> right. I do believe that, obviously, with what's happened over the last 18 months, a lot of people are really struggling with their mental health. Yeah, really big time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this kind of segregation away from people. I, I think for me, that the whole value of community is suddenly cut because we quite often when we're in our daily lives we moan about people you know we complain yeah. about the neighbors we complain about the people we work with or whatever and what happens over time is when that, when that's suddenly removed because you don't have to deal with these people you then yeah. realize the value of those relationships absolutely and because it's such a change in ourselves particularly because we may have had to stay at home we may yeah. have had to curtail our hobbies um going out and eating and all those kind of things we've then had to have a new set of skills yeah. to deal with being with us yes. right being with ourselves yeah and so i've encountered quite a lot of people that have been really struggling with that recently yeah i can imagine and i think you know majority of us don't realize just and i think i've got generalized here but i'm gonna go with it anyway because some people might disagree with me but i think the general public don't realize how unhappy they are with themselves until they stop and realize they're on their own that's right that's right i think i think yeah i think some people are very happy with them in themselves but i think that's because they've set a routine and and you know being in isolation and being in lockdown is a dramatic change to people's lifestyle yeah 
Now, that wasn't something that you or I decided. It was something yeah. that happened to us. It was a circumstance. Yeah. And it's how you deal with that. And not everybody's equipped to deal with them uh, to start to dramatic change so quickly. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Steve. And I think looking back before this happened, I was very, very busy. You know, I had this like superpower <laughs> running here, there and everywhere. And yeah. I didn't realise how those things around me were what were making me happy. I think I was happy, but I didn't know if, you know, when I come into the pandemic, if I was actually happy in myself because those things have been taken away. And that was a whole yeah. new ball game for me. That's it. And there's the look, what happened with the pandemic is it's a yet it's a yardstick. Yeah. Suddenly you had this life that you either loved or you didn't love or whatever. You you were maybe ticking along. Yeah. And then there's such a dramatic change. You've now got a yardstick to compare it to. Yes. And you say, well, hang on, that was then, this is now. And then people are getting anxious because they don't want to know what the future is. Yeah. So if you were somebody that, you know, felt that you were depressed, you're re normally, and I'm not, I'm not, again, generalist comment, but normally depression is about something that's happened in the past, yeah. which has led up to that point. Being anxious or having anxiety is worrying about the future. Something yeah. that hasn't happened yet or something that is about to happen that you're not too sure of what the outcome is going to be. So, for me, when I'm talking to people about mental health awareness, which is something I, I am really quite passionate about, I try and get people to live in the moment. Yes. And to live in the moment is, is quite often can be a very, very innocent catchphrase. Oh, live in the present, live in the moment. And actually, people don't know how to do that. It's very easy to say, but people don't know how to do it. Yeah. And so when I, uh, you know, my track's coming out tomorrow, uh, the, the 23rd and you know, and I know our podcast is going to go out on a Sunday, but we, the music that I'm creating is to try to get people just to listen for four and a half, five minutes and be in the moment with that music. And when you're in that moment, you're not worrying about what's happening tomorrow. You're not worrying about what's happened in the past, but you're giving your mind and your brain a rest for yeah. four and a half minutes. Now, that, that, that's not long. So you can listen to the whole albums if you want to for an hour. That's fine. But it's not long. But it does give you some respite. And, uh, and I would recommend anybody, even if you don't like my music, but find some music that, that gets you into that relaxed state. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's such a valuable message. And I think music is one of those things that kind of unites us all. You know, if you've got your favourite track, you go into your own little heart, what I call your heart space, where you are in a place of joy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. And, yeah. yeah. And you don't need to justify why you like that piece of music. It just feels right to you. Exactly. It's what triggers you, right? It's yeah. in a positive way. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the choice that we make. But I think, you know, when we're so busy, 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 often we don't make those choices. We let life just take over, don't we? That's right. And it's exactly the point you've just made. It's because we're busy. Yeah. We don't allow, to, you know, we don't allow ourselves time to rest. And when we, you know, if you work in an office or you do something else, what you tend to do at lunchtime, sometimes sit at your desk and eat your dinner or your lunch yeah. and then click and play silly games on the computer. That's not really giving your brain a rest. No. So, you you know, you kind of, you know, I'm, I very much encourage people at the moment to, to get outside and, you know, be with a tree, be in the park, yeah. you know, be on the beach, breathe in the air, you know, that, that's, that clears the cobwebs away and just gives you that moment of, of respite. It does. It really does make a difference. And I always say to people, if you can separate your day into sections, if something goes a bit pear shaped or something's upsetting you, something's bothering you, you've got that space within. That's that happens. You know, that's that moment in time. That's that season for now. And the next season, the next moment in your time, you could have a different outset outlook in, inside as well, because yeah. you've actually took the time out to say, I'm not going to let this um, bother me. I'm not going to let it get on top of me. I'm not going to let this stress me out. I'm going to walk away from it. I'm going to take that five minutes out, four and a half minutes if it's a beautiful piece of music. And I'm going to go to a quieter place in myself so that I can see things more clearly. That's right. Yeah. Thank Very you. Valuable piece of advice, then. Yeah. And Steve, for yourself, love, I want to say, I want to ask you an obvious story. It's like, have you ever suffered with mental health? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, my 
history is that uh, I was uh, a police officer many, many years ago in Yarmouth, in Great Yarmouth, funnily enough, uh, okay. when I was very young. And yeah. then I uh, went away to university and traveled the world, had very, very great experiences. And I, I got involved in some really stressful projects. Uh, I built a couple of hospitals in Turkey and that kind of thing. They, 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 you know, they sound exotic. But actually, what it was is that it was a real um, brain dance because I was dealing with people in Japan, which was a one time cycle and other people in America, which is on another time cycle. So I was working 18 hour days to try and talk to everybody. And it was very intense. And and I found that um, I was not feeling worthy. I was uh, I was feeling t very tired. I was feeling very down on myself. Yeah. And I realized it was because I wasn't spending time for me. And it's a bit, it's a bit like racing a car at 100 miles an hour and never stopping to do any pit stops. You know, eventually the car is going to break or you're going to crash. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I did a couple of things. Um, first of all, I, I was very lucky that somebody, I kind of said to somebody, oh, so, do you know, I actually think I'm a bit depressed. And this guy said to me, he said, yeah, he said, you are. He said, I thought you knew that. And I went, well, no, I didn't. But that trigger, just that sentence mm -hmm. kind of made me go, yeah, I need to do something about this now because I really shouldn't be feeling this way. And I'm a bit out of whack. I'm a bit out of harmony. Yeah. And so I decided to find something which was relaxing. Now, I've been doing meditation for years at that point, but I'd stopped doing it because the job took over. So, you know, yeah, I knew how to meditate, but I just wasn't doing it. And I was eating junk food as well because I didn't have time to eat properly. So that, that didn't, that kind of gave me an out of whack feeling as well. And so what I did was I picked up uh, an instrument. I wanted to learn to play an instrument. So I picked up Native American style flutes and I started to learn to play that. And when I play, I kind of go into that zone, into that piece. And so what's happening is all I'm doing is I'm in that moment in the music. So playing for me was great. And then a year later, I released my, my first album called Painted Faces, uh, which was out in 2010, I think. Yeah. And um, that was very successful. Um, lots of people um, commented how good it was. A record company purchased it and it's, it went all around the world. But um, the, the, the things that, why I, I gauge it as being successful is because I had people coming back to me saying, it helped me with my mental health. It helped me with my physical health. It helped me sleep. It helped, and then I kind of, it, it clicked in my brain then. I said, wow, maybe this is something that I was meant to do, right? Um, I've had this experience of feeling not great. I've done something about it. I found something that which makes me feel 150% better than I was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I have to still have down moments now and again, but you know, I pick a flute up. I listen to music you know that that's what that's what i do so um yeah i mean that 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 is my story so I, and you know even now sometimes when i maybe have an argument with somebody that i need to have an argument with because we, we need to get a job done i still sometimes feel a bit down but i now have a series of coping mechanisms just to, to recognize this is not a good space to be in. So go and play a flute, go and walk in nature, go and spend some time breathing in the fresh air or being on the beach. And those kinds of things help me to put things in perspective. The things that I'm being anxious about, I shouldn't really be anxious about. And the things that I'm feeling down about gives me clarity to find the positive in it. So, and all of that, I would call it a, a maintenance. It's a maintenance service, right? You, you maintain your mind um, your mind affects your body. So, you know, if you get upset stomachs or through stress or stuff like this. And so if I'd known this 20, 30 years ago, maybe I wouldn't have had so many, I don't have lots of issues, but, you know, I would have perhaps calendar, calendarized it, if you like, yeah. specific time for meditation, for music, for these kinds of things, because yeah. I think they're so important to everybody. Yeah. Absolutely, Steve. I, I totally agree. But then maybe you didn't know back then. And, you know, I do believe, Steve, that we go through experiences for a reason. And I think a part yeah. of our life is about learning. Another part is about understanding. And the next part is about sharing. Yeah, yeah I, I, 
totally agree with that. And I, I, I think I think that's really right, Dawn, because I think if I hadn't have experienced that, I would yeah. probably be very blasé about it. Oh, well, that's what happens to other people. Yeah. You know, and, and I think sometimes that is how mental health is viewed. However, recently, spe specifically with a pandemic, mental health as a subject has really come to the fore. Yes. You know, lots of lots of offices, lots of businesses, lots of people are recognising that mental health is a serious issue. And, yeah. you know, I, I wanted to do something about that. And that's why I've, uh, I'm, you know, I've made a recent track for it. So. Brilliant. Well done, love. And, you know, we do, if that's OK with you, I'd like to play that piece of music for you. Yeah, please okay. do. Because, first of all, does your piece of music, does it have a, a name? Yeah. So my track is called Two Worlds. Yes. And um, let me just give you a little back, bit of background with it, because I work with Norwich City College uh, on their Mental Health Awareness Week. Okay. And I've done that for the past two years. And I've been doing meditation uh, workshops, sound journey workshops, relaxation techniques, all this kind of thing, and talking about mental health. And I play music for them, obviously. And um, but this year I had a guy called Alex Holmes, who's a student. He's 18 years of age and he did a film project. And we collaborated and we've actually got a music video, my first music video. I'd done this piece of music and I really didn't know why I'd done this piece of music. I had created it. It, it kind of got a little bit of a city vibe, a little bit of a buzz to it. It was a bit bit busy you know and I thought I, I don't know why I, and, I, and I called it cut something completely different and then when I spoke to Alex he wrote a script for the music video and when I read it the penny dropped and I realized that this was about two worlds it's about being in this world of stress yeah. you know which I kind of called it the black and white sort of city world and it goes into this natural piece into this sort of back to nature and that's that's what it's about Trying to get back into the moment. Yeah, and I think that's such an important thing to come back into the moment whenever you feel stressed. And I'm going to turn this up now because I've got it play, gently playing in the background just so that we can enjoy this and then you can tell us where we can get hold of it. Sure. Got to work out how my technology works. Go on it. Go. Oops, hang on. It's gone the wrong way. <laughs> Don't you just love technology? Love it. I'll figure it out in a minute. Yeah, don't worry. I'll get there before the end of the track. I can guarantee that. So if anyone's sitting listening to this, just take a moment, just close your eyes and listen to the tune. And think about things in your life that you're ready to let go of right now. Is that loud enough for you, Steve? It's fine, yeah. Really beautiful. Just taking a moment, everybody, just breathing into your body and just feeling that calm coming over you. So I breathe in peace and I breathe out calm.
is beautiful. That's so beautiful. And Thank you. I, I will say, I will tell you a little story afterwards, but this is, could be the answer to my prayer that I've been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh that makes me so happy <laughs> it really does and I will maybe we share the story now because I do believe in divine timing and when I first started doing my podcasts I had this idea in my head and I didn't know how it was going to come together but over the time it's getting a bit better as I go you know some yeah. of them I look back and think oh dear me <laughs> that was an oh dear moment it's okay. well, that's learning but, that's learning right that's learning so. it is. but you know as we go in I at the beginning, I saw a piece of music at the beginning, which I've chosen Denise Weiser's piece of music, which is about changing patterns. And that's obviously the theme of the story of our podcast. And in the center, I was going to do a little mini meditation with a gentle piece of music in the background, but I didn't know where that was coming from. Right, right. <laughs> and then at the end, finishing off with whatever feels appropriate. So maybe an upbeat song or something like that. I haven't yeah. created that one yet, but I'm just thinking maybe somewhere down the road, we could talk about that, Steve. Yeah, why not? Why not? Absolutely. Because that's beautiful. Mu music, you know, I, I Native American flutes are kind of limited because they usually have six holes in them. So you, you know, your the scale of the flute is not huge. And I really, because I've been talking to young people, and, and look, mental health affects everybody. I, yeah. I don't, you know, it's not just young people. So I want to make that clear. But what I was hearing from the students is similar things that I experienced when I was younger. Yeah. And to, uh, you know, when you, when you play Native American style flutes and particularly the new age type of music or the world's music, it tends to be a bit plinky plonky. It tends to have rain in the yeah. background or, and I've done all of those kinds of things, but I kind of wanted to give it a little bit of a rock feel to it. A kind of a, a you know, a little bit more that's going to appeal to people yeah. that don't normally listen to this genre of music. Yeah, they don't normally listen to it. So I really wanted to try and push the limits of, of the instrument and uh, and to give it that kind of grungy sort of electric guitar thing in the background, which... Wow, well, you've definitely, definitely <laughs> achieved that, Steve. That is beautiful. And I did listen to it last night and again this morning because it, I just thought, well, this is almost like a, a meditation, but you're not having to kind of go to that conscious thought of meditating. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, lots of people think about meditation that you've kind of got to go to sleep and you yeah. kind of got to do that. And that, that's really not what I want to advocate because listening, to just list, just closing your eyes, breathing and listening to music for four and a half minutes. That's a meditation. Yeah. Right. That's getting off the wheel of stress for a few moments. Yeah. You know, you don't need to be asleep. You don't need to be going on. You don't need to do any of that. If you do, fine. But you don't need to. So just listen, just spend four or five minutes, just take time out. And that's what this track's about. Excellent. Well, I think you've nailed it. Absolutely nailed it, Steve. And please tell me, how can people get hold of this? So um, with the pandemic, I normally used to sell my albums with hard copy CDs. Yes. But this is only available electronically. So you can get it on Spotify, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Deezer. Um, so you can download it if you want to, if you want to have it on your smartphones or your laptops. Or you yeah. can listen to it by streaming it. And streaming's great, isn't it? Because Spotify now for, for everybody is free. You you don't have yeah. to sign, you know, you don't have to pay for it. You just get adverts. Um, but yes, you can get it at those places. And the other thing I would say is if you want to hear a little bit more about the background of this track, yeah. then on Saturday the 24th, on my YouTube channel, there will be the music video. And if you watch the music video, you will really get the meaning behind it. OK, because it's about a suited gentleman who's stressed and it goes through this journey of the track and he gets back to nature and, and you know, gets the sun shining on his face. And that's really what the message is. Take those few minutes, watch, be involved for those four and a half minutes. I love that. And I can see that in my mind without even seeing your video. Okay. And your YouTube channel is it under Steve Newton. Yes, yeah, Stephen, Stephen with a V, Stephen Newton. Uh, just look me up. You'll see a little uh, what we call a little Cocapelli man in black and white, and you'll see you'll see a picture of me on there as well. So excellent. Thank you. Spot. Thank you. And did you say two o'clock? Two o'clock. Did you say two o'clock? Well, they were the the YouTube video will be out on the twenty fourth. Okay. 
Let me the write track that down. is out on the 23rd, so you can get those, uh, you can listen to the track on its own on the 23rd. The music video will be out on the 24th. Okay. And that'll be midnight from the 24th because you can go and click on a premiere link in there and it will automatically come live if you want to. So I can Excellent. I can send you those links, Dawn, and maybe, you know, if you, you when you publish, maybe you want to put the links in and something like that. Okay, lovely. Okay, and I think I could put this up on my YouTube channel as well because I think brilliant. Yeah, there's a lot of people that. out there don't know where to turn to. You know, so it's it's interesting because you 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 know, there's lots of people out there that will teach you how to meditate, but they meet they teach you how to meditate for a certain purpose, yeah. and that's not always what you need. You know, I I talk a lot about mindful meditation, yeah, which is you know taking your shoes and socks off and going walking in grass. Or yeah. going to the beach if you can get there and wiggling your toes in the water and the sand yeah. or, you know, eating a piece. Of, you know, if you can't get out, eat a piece of fruit for a minute and just try and taste all the textures and the flavors and just be in the moment. That, yeah. again, is a form of meditation. So all of these things you can do. The thing I've tried to do is give you a piece of music to support you with that. I love that. I'm going to write this down. Because I'm, I'm looking at a piece that I can promote you with, music to support you. Because I am one of these people. I have brain waves and great inspirations, and they pop in, and a second later it's gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I used I, to I think that was a problem. That. I don't think you're alone with that. I think we all do that. <laughs> but I think you know, if you if you take a moment, anybody you know who's listening to us today, if you take a moment, just if you have an inspiration, pop it down. Because often when we go into stressy times and things that are stressing us out, and sometimes we don't have a choice because it's a way of life that we need to maintain. That's right. Yeah. You know, That's if right. you've got something which could be a trigger, and it could be just a small piece of music that you've got in your earphones or on your phone, and you could take even a minute out just to go, oh, or you just connect with the bow of that music. Sometimes that can be your anchor, your trigger to actually make you feel better. Absolutely. So, Wow, I'm so pleased that you come to speak to us today, Steve, because I think music is definitely a way forward because we don't need to explain it. We just need to connect with it. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, two, two worlds, as I say, is out on, on Friday the 23rd. But I have, you can see behind me, there are three music albums. Um, I Painted Faces was my first. Dreamwalking was my second. And Standing Circles was my third. And I won a Global Music Award for Standing Circle. So somebody liked wow. it somewhere. Yeah. Um, so if you get a chance, have a listen. If you want to get a hard copy CD of those, then you know all you need to do is message me through my website or uh, through any of my social media. You'll Excellent. find me. So Excellent. That'd be great. Thank you so much, Steve. And can I just ask a question? Well, I've got a hundred questions, but I think we'll save that for another day. <laughs> okay. You've, you've kind of inspired me to think of things. I think, you know, can I just share something, a thought that's just popped in my mind. And for anyone who's new to what I'd call self-healing, yeah. often we're waiting for something to trigger us to feel better. But when we actually go into that quiet mind, in that quiet stillness, like listen to your music, the beauty of that is your mind goes into your deeper conscious mind and the intuitive ideas which we can help to change things come in. Yes. So my answer to this is quite a lot of people think about meditation as emptying your mind yeah. and having nothing in it. That's a mistake. Yeah. Don't try and empty your mind because I can tell you mine is cluttered with everything. I've got so much junk in my mind. There's no point trying to empty it. I'd be there yeah. for years. Yeah. But what, what, so when you look at meditation, quite often people say start to breathe, which is what yeah. you said earlier when we listened. So what you're doing is you're concentrating on the breathing. So you're occupying your mind with a single task, breathing in and out. So you're not emptying it, you're doing yeah. something. And yeah. it's the same with music. If you occupy your mind with music, you're doing something. So I would say the opposite. Don't try to empty your mind. Yeah. Give your mind something to do, but give it one thing. Don't give it 20. Good point. Yeah. I shall take board that. <laughs> I shall take that on board. And do you think, Steve... No, thank you for sharing, because I just feel like you've kind of triggered off a lot of thinking there. And I'm sure anyone listening to that, I just want to share something which I know is really important. Your mind cannot think of two things together. So if you're focusing on stress or something that's distressing you or your anxiety or what you, you know, believe is going on right now, your mind cannot get from that place there to that place of joy. 
And I think it's what hard. I experienced with your music yesterday, Steve, when I was listening to it, is it it was almost like a lull. My mind went into a what I'd call a lull, like as if I was sitting by the beach or sitting under a tree. It had that same rhythmic feel of that calm peace coming over me. Absolutely. And 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 the rhythm, the rhythm of the tracks are very important because yes. everything we do is rhythm. Yes. Breathing is a rhythm, heartbeat is a rhythm. And so when we say we're out of balance, it means that we've got a, a rhythm that's not really working with our energy or our body or whatever. And that's why you like certain tracks, but you don't yeah. like other tracks. OK, and, and that's normal. You can listen to all of my music. There'll be two or three tracks. You go, oh, I can't stand that. And that's fine because that yeah. one's not for you. And then there'll be others who go, oh, I really like that one. Yeah. That's one yeah. for you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so you're absolutely right. You have to find rhythm. Yeah. And find what's right for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep, absolutely. Keep, yeah. Keep experimenting. Don't, you know, just because one piece of music doesn't work, try something else. Or just because one musician doesn't work, please try something else. Because you're exactly. always then giving yourself a choice to go from that stress place to there's an option here. There's a choice. There's always a way. Yeah. There's always a way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think a lot of the time, Steve, I don't know about you, but in my past and, you know, people I work with, a lot of the time we feel stressed or anxious because we don't feel we've got a choice but to other feel other than feel this yeah we get bound by obligation don't we yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. okay so one question that's come up is with your music do you think that would be helpful for children as well like with special needs and people who are distressed or angry definitely definitely so okay. i have friends all over the world and um, quite often people say to me things like, I have a youngster, you know, they're toddlers, they won't sleep, or I have teenagers that won't go to bed until really late. And I say, yeah, just put my music on in the background. I said, you don't have to tell them. I said, it's your music, you listen to it. And all yeah. of a sudden they get to a certain point and they're, they're like this and yeah. they want to sleep. Uh, and I've had a number of successes where, where that happens. And yeah. also um, I've had youngsters, or well, I used to put up little YouTube video clips yeah. They put it on repeat because they love listening to the sound of the flute. So, I, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's look, it's the same with any music. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Some kids will go, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of kids will love it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, play yeah. it, please. Absolutely. And I think also with music, there's a time for everything. So one piece of music might resonate now in your life, where in a month's time you might need something else. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. So tell us once again, where can we find your music? So it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon, it's on Deezer. Um, all of these places you can listen to. I will also put it on Bandcamp tomorrow. So if you if you want to do that, you can download it if you wish, or yeah. you can listen it um, via streaming. Um, okay. So yeah. Excellent. Well done, love. Thank you. And are you doing this? Obviously, it's to help people with mental health problems or who are feeling distress or wherever we attach, you know, what we attach to it, that, that can help people come to. That's yeah. right, yeah. Is the aim to, for the future, is this to bring people together or is it just for the music to enlighten people? It, it, my aim with it is to just make people aware that they're not alone. Okay. Okay, there are lots of people that suffer from this. People that, you know, painted faces. The reason that my original, um, albums called painted faces is because it's a painted face that people present to the world and when you listen to the music i want people to take off their painted face and find their true selves that's why it's called painted faces because we present to the world what we want them to see yeah. and the thing is with mental health is that we don't want anyone to see that we don't want people to know of the inner struggles that we go through because we're embarrassed because mm -hmm. it kind of comes across as saying that we're weak and we're not actually because we're fighting every day and we're probably the stronger people because yeah. we're still here. Yeah. We're still here and we're still doing it. Yeah. And so what I'd say to people is, don't ever think that you're the only person suffering from mental health issues because you're not. And there is always someone out there that you can speak to who will yeah. be going through something similar. Reach yeah. out to somebody, talk to somebody. This whole pandemic that cut the community off is why mental health blew up because you didn't have anybody. Yeah. You couldn't talk to anybody. People wouldn't notice it because they weren't in your presence. You weren't in their presence. So talk to people, listen to music. And look, if you really struggle, reach out to me because I'll talk to you. 
Okay, thank you, Steve. And I really, really appreciate that. Love. And thank you so much for your time today. And I think actually from this, maybe there's some other things that we could explore as well. We could do it like mini podcasts for different different things. Sounds good. But if you could just stay on the line for a moment, I'm going to just say goodbye to everybody for, or say goodbye to Steve for a moment online. And then we'll come back and have a chat in a moment, Steve. But thank you so much. And I am so looking forward to listening to your music. And Thanks for your time. yeah, that's definitely on my playlist now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, love. Thank you. Well, that was the lovely Stephen Newton. And go to his YouTube channel and find his beautiful music because the last track he's done, which is called Two Worlds, is to help people with mental health. It resonates on the mind chakra. Okay, if you don't understand anything about chakras, anything about healing, just go over and listen. Give yourself four and a half minutes of prime time where you are just listening to what is right for you. When you start to honor yourself, when you start to value yourself, put that value on you, you can change your world. And if you're feeling depressed, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling whatever you're feeling right now, it's because you've gotten out of harmony with who you should be. So if you're looking at the bigger picture, this is who you should be. You should be up here, you know, up with your soul chakra, knowing who you are from the peace with yourself. If you're down here in a state of disharmony, that void in between can sometimes seem massive. And as Dr. Bark says, when there's a void between your thinking and who you should be is when dis-ease sets in. Okay, just food for thought. When you see yourself as someone important, you work on yourself, you value yourself, you do things for you every day, your vibration starts to go up, your self-worth goes up, your value goes up. And then what's going on in your world around you starts to change. It starts to shift. You feel better in yourself because you're changing who you are. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just means at the moment something's got that balance. Start where you are. Listen to this beautiful music, which I'm going to finish with at the end. Go over and listen to more of Stephen's music and see which one resonates with you. Because his tunes, I know, resonate with different chakras within the body so if you're not ready for that one today maybe that's what you need if you're not ready for that one that's what you need make a choice because that's what you need for you and i've just had a lovely chat with steve and we're going to do a little series of yeah healing meditations with his music it's such a privilege to work for someone who is so in touch with what his passion is in life and I would say for you, if you're not in touch with what you're destined to do right now, it's often why that disharmony feels like it's setting in and you feel out of balance. When you start working towards your passion, there will still be obstacles, there will still be tests, there will still be challenges, but every one of those is an opportunity for you to grow. Keep taking those challenges, keep stepping up the play, keep stepping up. Step away, take some time for you, Four and a half minutes, that's all it takes, just to reassess who you are, to realign who you are, and then step into the next step. Do you know, if you do one thing for you every day, that's 365 things that you've done for yourself. It's like taking your car for service 365 times. It's going to run better, and so will you. If you keep neglecting you, it gets run down, you get run down. I bet you wouldn't run your car for the next year without servicing it, without filling it up with love and petrol and oil and all those things it needs. So why do we assume that we're going to get up to there when we've done nothing for ourselves down here? This is just my message for you, because mu music is the heart of the soul. For me, it lifts up and you don't need to explain it. You don't need to understand it. But just know it's because you've resonated with that music that you're feeling yourself. Please take just four and a half minutes as I'm going to put the track back on at the end and listen to your breath. Just listen and go into your breath. Listen to the music. And if thoughts pop in, just breathe into them and let them go. Breathe into them and let them go. I don't want to talk over it because I think the music speaks for itself. But there's a lot you can do for yourself. Often we wait for something outside of ourselves to make that 
the feeling right, and it doesn't come, or it might come temporarily, and then we sink back down. Do something for yourself each day, even if it's listening to this gentle piece of music, which you can find up on Spotify and all those other beautiful channels. Remember, you are important. When you make you a priority, your life gently falls back into place and you will see your things, your world, your whole new opportunities become more clear around you and within you. So thank you for listening and I'm going to play this music and then I've got to let it just fade away. Just go enjoy your day knowing that you've done something really important for you today. This is your time. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Gently closing your eyes. Just breathing gently down into your body. Very gently. If you need to fidget, get to, you know, comfortable, just do so. This is your time. Two Worlds by Steve Nelson.
truly beautiful and so are you. Until next time, take the time to be at peace within yourself because you do deserve it. Thank you.